All right. Does everyone see the slides? Yeah. All good. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming and giving me the opportunity. Today, we're going to talk about uh, my, our experience with our company doing the transition from Sketch, uh, Abstract, and Envision to Figma. So we're going to start with the brief introduction, talk about our workflow pre-Figma, how Figma got into our radar, and, and how we consider switching, uh, and then how we got to our current workflow and transition tips at the end for people that also want to move their stuff and also take any questions. So first, an intro. Hi, I'm Guy. <laughs> I'm a product designer at Clavio. I'm originally from Porto Alegre, Brazil. Uh, before Clavio, I worked as a consultant focused on mobile apps at Accenture, and I also work at a game company studio in Brazil called Akiris. Uh, if anyone hasn't heard of Clavio, we are e-commerce marketing platform from Boston, focused on email and SMS. Um, and our design team has grown quite a bit since I joined. We I was the third designer, basically, and now we're over 15, so we scaled quite a bit. Here's some nice pictures from our office back when offices were a thing. Um, some of the work I've done that helped ship our SMS product, work with front end in our design system specs and documentation. We also have a podcast, which I will leave the link. And in the last year, I also assisted with our Sketch and Figma transition, which is what we are here to talk about today. So how did our workflow used to be before Figma? Um, this might look familiar to some people. So we use Abstract, Sketch, and Envision. Uh, Sketch was our main design tool, the leading interface design tool since 2014, Mac OS only. Uh, we use Abstract for file and versioning. Um, it was a nice sort of platform because it allowed us to have a common uh, source of truth. And it was easy to keep track of all changes. So you just open a branch. And, and that was very similar to the workflow that engineers are used to. Because whenever you want to change code, you gotta, you know, you gotta be, you gotta open a branch and you gotta write about what you changed. And it was nice to have this sort of parallel with design. Um, and unfortunately, there was no some something similar like that in Figma currently, but it worked really well for us in the sketch days. And we also use Envision for prototyping, and it was the main way that our stakeholders got access to the to their designs. Uh, a nice thing about Envision is that it was just a link that you can share widely and you can control your, your permissions. And if all is well, everything's in sync, working as expected, you are focused, in, each tool is focused on their individual tasks. You go from one app to the next, all is perfect. But then Sketch releases an update, breaks integration with Envision, something gets outdated in Envision and you gotta go find the corresponding place in Abstract. Um, you know, it, it's great to have all these tools that are focused on a task, but all these connections are possible pay points for failure. And, you know, when things fail, it can be quite a pain. I, I heard about a Sketch releasing an update yesterday that broke some components. So this can happen. Uh, but at the time, we just expected these are the issues of, you know, working collaboratively. And this had to be the way it goes. There was no other better tool. But then <laughs> there was Figma. I remember 2016, there was this video that made the rounds in designer news, like this new tool called Figma that promised to be like an all-in-one platform. They showed a designer in one side and the engineer in the other, and they were all working in the browser. Uh, and I remember being like, how is this possible? Can you actually <laughs> work in, a, in the browser to do design work and it can be as fast as a native app? Um, you know, version 1.0 came out and it was mostly focused on the multiplayer aspect. People were all thinking, why would designers want to be at the same file at the same time? I'm going to move this layer. You know, someone's going to move it back and it's going to be quite a mess. And a lot of things were missing that people that were considering the switch, it just wasn't there uh, yet for us. But then they kept iterating and they kept adding things that, um, so they added prototyping, they added inspect, um, they added a bunch of design system oriented features shortly a year, la a year later. And there was no, they keep calling these versions like 1.0, 2.0. There was no 4.0, but for me, it was when they added auto layout in the plugins feature, just because that those are things that uh, were missing. And also in the case of auto layout, I think was really more refined than Sketch. And we started hearing constantly about design candidates applying to our company that were using Figma as their main design tool. So we we're starting to think about is this the time to make the switch? And what are the things that we can do that are better than what we do today? 
Um, the Figma ease of use is just really a killer feature. You can just start a, a file by just clicking like opening a new tab in your browser. If you want to collaborate, you can just send the link. You There's no really equivalent in Sketch until they release the um, their collaborations features as well. And we were really excited about the idea of embedding documentation. Uh, a lot of time was wasted in just taking screenshots, copy and pasting, putting in a doc, realizing it was out of date, then going back and updating them or syncing to Envision. So as Figma got mentioned more and more, we started looking into switching. And compared to the previous workflow, the idea of having design, prototype, and specs all in one was really enticing. But we still needed to figure out some things. Like how do we handle file management if there's not something like abstract? Like how do you do handoff if your handoff is actually the design file itself? And how can we take advantage of that? And how are we gonna move all this stuff? So we started to looking into making a new workflow. Um, one of our goals was to, it had to be easy. Um, we really liked the workflow that we had in abstract and we wanted something similar. The idea of having this one source of truth that you can go to and be confident that all the designs here are the latest. So we really want to keep that. Because there was no direct replacement to abstract, we knew that that would require a little bit more of uh, manual work to, to make that happen. And oops. secondly, you know the, how they say that with great scale comes great need for structure. Uh, our team was growing quite a bit from being three people. So uh, we knew that we needed more structure to ensure that everyone was at the same page as we add stuff to the product. Uh, at the same time, we do not want to add too much friction that would make iteration a chore. So we looked into other companies. Uh, Spotify has this great talk about their ways of working in Figma. Uh, it's a great example of how to scale the system at a much larger company than we were at the time, but it was almost too much documentation process for the size that Klaviyo was in. Then we looked at uh, Dropbox. It was a great use of cross-platform assets. So Dropbox has their global styles and the mobile styles. We do not, we do not have um, sort of cross-platform, but we really like their idea of uh, sticker sheets, which I'll get to later. Basically, it's a it's a way, a different, an alternative way for designers to get access to components and documentation in the same file. I also ask around Twitter and find other designers uh, going through the same sort of question. Uh, the answers vary quite a bit, but I identified two major strategies that people are doing. And I mapped these into a whimsical flow going through uh, the same starting point from the perspective of the designer in our team, like starting a new project and they want to get work done. Like what are the steps that they could do if we want to have this sort of source of truth that is shared across everyone? Uh, Mirror is also great for doing that, by the way. Uh, and our first alternative was what if we keep the iterations and the source of truth in the same file, kind of replicating what we had with abstract being like open branches. So the idea with this uh, workflow would be uh, you have one file that represents what is live today and acts like a hub. You can, and if a designer wants to start a work, um, a new project, they can create pages inside that file. And that's a nice way because it could lead to serendipity of designers working in the same area and finding out about projects that are also working, um, you know, in the same sort of feature area. So they could, they could talk about like how they can merge their initiatives. Uh, after the work is done, all the designers would need to do is go back to the, the page that represents the source of truth, what, what is live and update those designs. This is kind of what abstract does for us automatically. When you merge a branch, it basically takes your designs and apply them as the new source of truth. Uh, our main problem with this approach was its sustainability. So Figma files can get heavy over time. If you keep all the iterations in one place, it just wouldn't be sustainable for the long run. And I was thinking about how can we make a cleanup process feel easy? And the easiest way that I can think of was duplicating the source of truth, deleting everything that is your iteration and then archiving that file. And then going back to your live file and deleting your uh, your sort of pages that are you know now up to date in the in the in the live page, so you don't need them anymore. So it was a lot of manual work. Um, so we we like this idea because it kept um, more visibility into these active projects, just like Abstract has with open branches. But the cleanup process was a little bit messy, 
And because we link to iterations quite a bit in documentation, uh, when you duplicate stuff or move stuff around, the, those links might break for uh, just because the artboard doesn't exist anymore. So it wouldn't be good for that. And at Clavia, we have horizontal teams that like data science that work across multiple areas. So to have them work in have a, uh, for one initiative have to have several different open files at the same time just will be a lot of pain for them and we are trying to be cog cognizant of that but if you flip that around the other idea is what if we uh, make the source of truth and iteration separate so we can have a source of truth file that includes only what is live today in the product and then each of those screens can be set as components and all live files are then published as a library that can then everyone can have access to. So a designer that wants to get started in a starting working in a project, they can create their file somewhere else and they can just pull from that library of the source of truth and start working from there. Uh, so why make those into a library? It basically makes it so that you can use um, Figma's uh, symbols, oh, sorry, component search. Um, and start from there. So you search for the, the screen you want to work on, you drag that over, you detach it, and you're ready to make edits. When you detach them, it also keeps the file structure. So we, we uh, you know, as, a, as an organization, we want designers to name our, our artboards very, you know, putting a lot of description into what is this so that you can find it easily, not only for when you're handing off, but also for us uh, designers to find things. So this helps designers remind them about, um, how the naming structure should work as they make iterations and continue to add, you know, the next sort of screen in the same flow. After the word gets shipped, designers just need to go back then to that live file, that library, and update the corresponding or add to new screens. And we can then keep the iterations links embedded in documentation intact for later access. Uh, also, when you change things to a library, a nice thing about it is that it reminds you that you are in a library with the little modal that comes up at the bottom. Uh, we also use a distinctive background color that um, that reminds people that the changes in this file, because they represent the source of truth, they should be done mindfully. And the nice thing about these, uh, the publish aspect of these elements is that just like abstract, when you click publish, you got to describe ideally what has changed in that file. And that is the aspect that we enjoy quite a bit just because it would allow us to have a more control over what has changed over these, uh, over the source of truth and when. So when you publish it, it goes to your version history and what designers have written there, um, it, it's a way for you to have control over what has changed in that source of file. Like, okay, I know that this person added the, these screens here. I can go back and see, um, because otherwise the, the autosave functionality of Figma just keeps a bunch of autosave versions, but you can create your own. If you click on the plus, you can sort of create, um, put a point in the timeline with what has happened then and include descriptions that would then get added to, to the file version history. So that's another way that you can also um, sort of control what has changed in that file other than just have a bunch of autosave versions that you don't know what have what has happened. So this approach kept the files cleaner. Uh, the iterations link, the links were kept the same. There was no need to duplicate or delete. And teams like data science, they could have their iterations in one file separate from the source of truth. And all they would need to do then is go back and update the source of truth in different places. So comparing the two alternatives, uh, Alternative B1, because <laughs> we thought that would be uh, the most scalable format that would work with all our teams. Uh, we talked with the team about their frustrations before we introduced this workflow, just to capture anything that we have might, might have missed. We shared that whimsical workflow with, uh, with the team, asking for any comments and feedback. We also recorded a loom going through the process. Also, uh, by the way, looms are a great uh, tool to uh, work remotely. I've been using it quite a bit also to ask any sort of quick feedback. Um, so this is how it is set up today. Uh, each, uh, each app area gets its own team. And we also have a team that is live, which indicates uh, all this, the source of true files are here. Um, 
uh, the teams, the other teams basically replicate the, the structure that we have in our main sidebar. So the live team has a file for each of those areas. And then inside those files, there are pages for sub subsections in an area. Uh, these live files are indicated with a nice green emoji. And that also helps it differentiate when you have a tab open in Figma. Or if you're looking at the list of libraries, you know that the ones that had the green dot are the ones that are live right now. Uh, since implementing this, uh, this uh, system, we have now, we are trying to expand it so that other orgs in the, in the company can use it. So we have the source, you know, marketing needs um, mocks that they can use for a blog post or support needs mocks to uh, write help docs. So we can have this place that everyone agrees is the, is the latest and they can find it with confidence. And that has helped quite a bit, like people asking about screens or taking time to make certain mocks. We can just have that as a source of truth and it, you know, other orgs are also um, taking advantage of that. Um, to help with the transition, we, we wrote a guide in our wiki and we also recorded a walkthrough for new designers joining. Like here's how you create a new project from start to finish, how you pull things from the live library, how you, you know, set up your files, etc. We also make um, an interactive embed. So this is one nice thing about Figma. Like I said, you can embed these things in the web. So we have our, our wiki with all the, the guidelines written and we wrote specifically the how to use Figma in Figma itself. <laughs> and we embedded that basically like a mini app that you can like navigate. I also have seen a lot of designers using Figma for making their portfolio. So it's, it's really quite amazing like what you can do with the idea that all your design is already in the web. Like you can just, there's just one click to put it on somewhere else. Uh, we can pin the, these files to the top of a, a team. So we pin the, the how to file. So whenever someone is looking at the live project, they can, they can see first, like, okay, how can I use this as a designer? Um, and it's one click away. And we also borrow from the Dropbox, the idea of the sticker sheet. So we have a file that has all the components uh, laid out in categories. And this is just an alternative way that designers can use components. So they can have this open as a tab and they can just copy and paste these components to their work if they don't wanna you know, navigate through the list in Figma or search for it. Uh, and we also include links to Storybook where they can find the implemented components and guidelines if we have them on Wiki. In terms of handoff, where Envision used to play this role, um, we wanted to provide designers with a set of tools that they can use to sort of document these in context of the design real easily. So we have, um, we have a library called um, Handoff Utilities, and we, we have a series of components they can use to, to document stuff. So we have this header that they can write, you know, what's the status of this, of, of these files? Like, what is the date that has been worked? What is your Slack handle? We can include links to documentations too. So we have a lot of our specs are in Google Docs. We can um, link those, be one click away. If you have a wireframes in Whimsical, you can also link that, um, include any additional information. And one unique thing about Figma too is that any frame is, can also have a direct link to it. So in your documentation, you can write about, say if you wanna make a mock that includes overlay, uh, overlay states, you can put a note there, include a link to that section, and then engineering is just one click away from checking all those. So you can like really, um, oh, sorry. See if we raise hand. Oh, good, continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Anyway, uh, so you can just select any text, uh, paste a link and it will become something that you can just go to the frame directly or you can also use command K. And we also utilize um, this plugin called Autoflow that allows you to link screens together. Uh, this is really, it allows you to set your hand off the file in a really nice way. Like if you can point people towards these different paths. Um, and the nice thing about this, plugin is that once you make a connection, the arrows will, uh, if you move your artboard or frame around, the arrow will also move it. So you don't have to do a lot of manual work, which is saves a lot of time. 
So yeah, um, I like to talk about some transition tips. Um, you want to start with the core elements of your uh, design system so that you can then have everything properly linked. So uh, you want to start with your colors or typography, grids, and then start to build like the more visual stuff like buttons, just because you want to make sure that these are linked. And then if you want to make changes to any of these elements in the future, uh, it's just one click away. Uh, and also as a tip, you can set certain libraries to be on by default on a team and organization basis. So Figma has this handy feature. Um, you can enable libraries for all team files uh, so that someone that's starting a new file, they already have you know colors available and all the typography available. They don't have to go and turn their library on, which saves a quite a bit of time. And in, in my experience, um, the sketch import feature from Figma is just it works really well if you want to keep your iterations around in Figma for reference. But if you have anything complex like masks or shadows, sometimes things don't translate very well. Um, so, and also most importantly, if you want to keep your designs linked to a library, it won't magically just use them just because your library most will probably be in an external file. So it, it really, it really, there is, you got to build it up from the ground. <laughs> uh, it, it took us quite a bit of time. We had someone dedicated to this um, as their side project, but it really pays off once you have everything in, in place, just because your designers will then be ready to start iterating from there. And if you're considering to switching, you might have some uh, sketch functionality that you think you know, Figma doesn't have X. I, I think there are quite a few plugins that can replace some of that missing functionality. So for example, um, sketch data, uh, which allows you to put a, a placeholder data, you know, like names or photos. There is this very nice plugin by Microsoft called Content Reel that basically does a very similar thing. It also allows you to look into community shared like data sets. So you can find uh, not only names and profile pictures, but also like addresses from a country or phone numbers that are formatted to the way you want or percentages and all sorts of things. It's, it's really quite nice. Another one is sketch assistance, which by the time these, this was released, we had already started transitioning. Um, but there is this plugin by discord called design lint, and it does something quite similar. It identifies any errors in terms of, uh, styles that might be missing and things like that. So the plugin community in Figma is quite active and there's quite a bit of stuff there that if you're considering to make the switch and you think, oh, but Figma doesn't do X, it might do just with the plugin. Uh, when you do a migration, it's good to have a sort of like a central place that anyone that has questions can access to. So we had a, a wiki page with, you know, here's what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, here's what you should expect. Here's when you should, you know, close all your your sketch sort of projects and move them to Figma by this date. Uh, this really helps just sort of whenever people had questions, we can point them to this resource. Um, and if anyone was, if any questions were asked that were, was not covered in this document, we would just update them to include that information. So it's really something to consider when you're doing this transition. And another thing you want to provide enough buffer you know, just don't cut everything all at once. <laughs> uh, we started with abstract first uh, because by that time, most designers were not actively using it in their projects. Then we did sketch later. Our licensing was expiring, but after the license expires, you can just keep using sketch, which is quite a nice thing. Um, and later we did envision, which was a little bit more complicated. I couldn't find um, an export tool that was all in one you basically had to go through every single one of them and click export, which took a little while. Uh, but you know, once it was out in Google docs, it was okay. This is, this is done. Um, you also want to remind your design team about, uh, include events and calendars and things that remind people about what's going to happen just because you want to be clear about the expectations, like remind people on, on Slack, just in case if they haven't seen the, the calendar reminder. So we had people try Figma first before most people went to Figma. So we created this uh, Figma channel for any questions and support. So the designers that were sort of like our early adopters can then help the, the ones that are starting later with any questions about the transition or about how Figma works. 
Um, I mean, again, the nice thing about Figma is that you are always a link away from being on the real design. So someone with a question about how do I do this, you can just share a link to Figma. The designer that is more experienced can go there, take a look, and maybe fix it in like a few minutes versus what it would be like in our previous workflow, right? Uh, someone would have a question, they would send a screenshot, you would be in Zoom trying to figure out what it is, uh, you know, quite a lot of pain. <laughs> so the, the idea that your design, your editable design can be accessed a click away, it's really like facilitated quite a bit, any sort of technical issues that we had in terms of design system work or things that don't behave as expected. And I've, I've listening to Twitter, I've heard that Figma is working on a voice chat feature. So imagine that you, you know, someone sends you a link that to find about, you know, fix this, mis uh, fix this component issue or something like that. And you can then be in a, in a voice chat right away, right? <laughs> and like, this is something that can only be enabled by a tool that is natively on the internet all the time. So, you know, I, I really appreciate that Figma is, is taking the opportunity here to think about all these other ideas of since we're always online, like what else can we do to facilitate that collaboration aspect? Uh, you want to revisit your, your system at major growth milestones for your design team, like what works for your current size certainly will not work as well for a larger team. Uh, and you got to reassess like, is this the time to add a little bit more process just to ensure that we can scale and people can be on the same sort of page? Like uh, the system that we had for, you know, 15 designers as we are right now might not work when we are 30, 30 designers or 100 and things like that. So then we, we're probably going to look at Spotify system a little bit more closely because now we have, you know, more need to add that sort of structure. And just a reminder that, you know, any change is hard and work, related changes are harder because we're so used to them and it can take a while to adapt but you just got to be flexible and open to uh, learn new things as you go and be okay with change and yeah at, and once you're at the other side I feel like all this process that we went through was really worth it and we can now be in a much better position to work remotely which we started this before the pandemic but it really paid off. Uh, and if anyone's looking to do the same, I hope this was uh, helpful. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Wow. Amazing. Oh my God. Um, I'm blown away. <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. Uh, I really like your presentation. And oh, yeah. It's so cute. Love it. Please share it in the mirror board yeah. uh, if you can. <laughs> Great. I, I would love to use it as a template for my for, for my further presentation. It's <laughs> yeah. so nice. Very nicely oh done. My God, I'm so impressed. Yeah. Very nice talk. Thank you so much. Amazing. So just as a reminder for the people uh, watching the stream, you can uh, raise your hand if you want to ask a question um, live. Um, you can turn your camera on or not, up to you. But uh, we also will just go through the questions that we have in the mirror board. Yeah. Once again, thank you so much. Amazing presentation. Thank Amazing you. <laughs> setup. Do you, do you have a special camera? You look very crispy sharp <laughs> on screen and also some lightning going on there, probably. Looks amazing. Yeah, I, I figure, you know, since I start working remotely, I'm using this camera. I have a, I just put my, um, my photo camera to you can now use it as a webcam. Mm. So, you know, I'm not going anywhere taking photos, so I might as well use this camera for something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I'm now using my DSLR for a webcam. It's like so fancy, but it's also an old camera. So, hey. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we're getting lots of uh, feedback in the conference channel. People are loving it, uh, especially loving your shirt, actually. Really cool shirt. <laughs> yes. Nice. You've got fans. <laughs> so, all right, we, we can go on to the first questions then. Um, so we have currently the problem that our customer is concerned to have all documents on cloud only. Have you had this discussion too? And how would you convince the customer here? They're concerned about everything being in the cloud. Yeah, because that's the, the difference mm -hmm. between Figma and Sketch, right? 
Well, I mean, I guess in reality, like if you have something in Sketch, it's going to be in the cloud somehow. Like you're going to have either Google Drive or you're going to have Dropbox or some other system. So your file is going to be in the cloud just for backup and, you know, just making sure that you don't lose that data. Um, I think Figma has quite a bit of their, their higher tier has a lot of security features for, um, for exactly this kind of customer that might be too, you know, sensitive about the data that's hosted there. So our, our company, we have, you know, okay, Okta, I don't know. It's like a two-step authentication process just because, you know, we want to IPO and then, you know, all the stuff around, you know, your design or, or, you know, security stuff has to be quite under control. So I'd say, you know, I'll think uh, Figma has a good sort of set of features that make sure that your design is only seen by the people that have to see them. But there is this other tier that you can also like, if you want to really reassure um, the client, like you can have that sort of extra protection layer. So you guys had a, a discussion around this when you were thinking about changing from Sketch Abstract to Figma. Yeah, this came from our IT department. Uh, you know, they were looking into this in terms of do they have the security? Like, can they integrate with uh, our sort of sign up, um, sign in? So yes, Figma could. And so that was uh, that was great. But mm -hmm. it was on this sort of like higher tier in terms of I think it was like enterprise that has this sort of added security layer. Probably. Cool. Um, so the next one, actually, that is a request from my side because I was really curious about uh, your the workflow that you put together when you were doing the findings. So is it possible for you to share with us the whimsical workflow? Yeah, it's I added to the to the board. Uh, also, th these slides are already there as a PDF. Uh, cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with the nice animations, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, no the PDF has all the links. <laughs> cool. Thank you. And in the examples, uh, you mentioned about branching through creation of uh, pages. Uh, do you think that would also work for design system components? Um, or maybe that was like in the first steps that you guys, as your guys were going through figuring out the workflow, like how do you see this, the, the branching system with design system things? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have, we are we're, we have a, a current library that has all the current stuff, and we also have a V two library that we want to make a switch, like we want to have a, this new look. We haven't really used this system for our components, but whenever you have edits on the same system, it's not like a major change. I feel like it. Figma doesn't. Yeah, I guess you have to replace them just because you want to keep sort of the links, right? Like if you make a change to this button. You want that to be applied everywhere. That's one of the main benefits of it. But you can keep that around, like, you know, duplicate that, then detach it, and then have that stored if you want, like, that style or that look. Um, but that that's a good that's a good question that's in our radar just because we want to do this in the near future. And we have, you know, a team that is working on a new sort of look. And they are, they are working on a separate sort of library. And the idea is that as we make that switch, we were going to have to then just because not all pages are going to be in this new look, we just can't use the same library for that. But yeah. Okay. Well, interesting to know. And how long did it take to transition from Sketch to Figma, including building library and training the team? Um, in terms of building the library, it took, we, we, you know, we are early just exploring, like, do we want to switch to Figma, at, you know, at all? Like just, so we had one designer that was, uh, you know, take a look at this, let us know what you think. That took a, uh, because this was a side project, it took a little while. Um, but I feel like if, if a team is really, you know, wants to really invest in moving, I feel like that could be much quicker. Like it took us um, around three months just to have, because there was just this one person like doing this as a side. Um, but it, I think if we had more people involved, it would be much faster. Um, the letting the team in, yeah, we, we did that sort of step-by-step um, -step approach of like, oh, yeah, we're doing this first and then this later and this later. Like that took three months just because we wanted to keep enough buffer between the tools. Um, so, 
yeah, I mean, if it dep it all depends on like how much work do you need to move. Also, uh, there are certain pages that weren't actively worked on that we can move later. So we had like areas that were more active. So we moved those first. So making sure that you know designers working in new projects and this is a, a area that we're adding a bunch of features. Let's focus on the things needed for this area first. As people need to work in this other area later, we can then move that stuff too. So not everything has moved just because some areas are not touched as often, but that's another strategy to expedite sort of this process. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so as you notice, Sylvia is like really trying to hold her laugh because, um, well, David just shared on the feedback channel. Um, everybody can join if you want to, to give feedback about the conference, but he's giving feedback to your t-shirt. You just ran his uh, his app through your image and he found out which colors you have in your t-shirt, just so you know. It's a quite an extensive list. You should check it out. <laughs> yeah, David pitched his uh, color, color app yesterday. He's our color wizard. So basically with his app, he can extract all the colors and yeah, and all the namings of the colors. And he just did this for your t-shirt. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Super funny. <laughs> all right. So nice. On to the next question. Our designers found issues with Figma for use cases with printing. Uh, for example, printing documents for client with images uh, slash SVG. Did you guys find a solution for that or encounter that issue with applying your Figma designs to print use cases? Uh, and by the way, they had to use Adobe XD to get a good quality in the printable resource. Yeah, I I haven't really used Figma for print that much. I know that even for mobile work, there are certain aspects. So if you want to design for mobile, like there's P3 color, they also don't have any sort of color profile support. This is something that I've seen a lot of designers ask for. So I feel like if they add, you know, CMYK colors, it's going to be much easier to manage. Um, it, it's interesting. Like we're seeing a lot of uses for Figma. They they really anticipate. Like a lot of people are doing these crazy illustrations. Like Figma wasn't designed as an illustration tool, but you know, people are going crazy with it and just doing all these sort of things. So I, I hope that Figma. Like I think Figma team is quite attuned to the you know, the needs of their customer base. And as people use Figma more for print purposes, I think they're going to add more features around that. But uh, yeah, our team, we just, our creative team has just switched to Figma as well. They were using Adobe. Um, but most of our stuff is not printed. So, um, right. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. And uh, I guess uh, that there could be improvements on the way. Uh, indeed, there was a tool that was thought for the UI mainly, right, to uh, serve the yeah, digital products. All right, so moving on, um, did I get it right that you keep the documentation in Figma or you embed the frames in other tools? Any performances issues? And can you get back to this again shortly? Uh, so for for components, we, we put the documentation on a wiki page and we embed sort of we make a frame that has you know all the distances and you know details about anything they want to call out specifically and that gets embedded to the to our wiki in terms of um any sort of feature work that is not you know that has engineers building this new feature for this particular you know part of the app uh we put the documentation next to it just because we think that you know an engineer looking at this might have some questions and we want to anticipate sort of what are, what are the things they might be thinking here? Like, how does this behave? How does this break? How does this, you know, scale at a certain screen size? All these sort of questions. We didn't have, um, if you try to put too many iframes in one page, it does get quite heavy. Um, so we try to be mindful of that. If try to put everything in one embed, if we can't, if we can. Um, but yeah, I haven't noticed any particular slowdowns on that. Like uh, Figma seems to be pretty good. Our concerns around, the file being heavy over time is just because there is, if you go to view resource use in Figma, there is this little bar, like there's actually a limit of layers. <laughs> it's very large, that it's like not a concern, but you know, we would have to get to that point at one time. So like thinking about like the future, we're like, okay, we need to clean this up every once in a while just to make sure. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. And I guess uh, also uh, maybe the person who asked this question didn't uh, watch the previous talk, but we had uh, yeah, a conversation about the embedding and a work around it as well. So uh, yeah, you guys can check the mirror board for the previous talk. There are some interesting um, insights in there. So um, there is, uh, oh yeah, this is, this is an interesting question because I really use this a lot myself on Sketch, uh, you know, Runner Pro. So is there any plugin or native feature similar to Runner Pro? Uh, yes, I used to use Runner. <laughs> I miss it a bit. Uh, it, it's funny because like this, I think it was last week, Figma released an update for their uh, command slash that looks like a Runner. But it's not like just it doesn't have like what I want out of that is just like search for a component name and have something visual that you can see and then just, you know, drag that over. The idea of them working in that command sla- uh, command slash for search makes me think that they want to expand that to the future. There is there wasn't a plugin called Walker, <laughs> which is a play on runner, just because they they didn't have all the <laughs> they didn't have all the capabilities that they could do. I mean. Uh, Sketch being a native app, there's a more things that you can do around plugins that Figma, um, initially at least, didn't allow for. But they are expanding this this stuff more and more. So I would check. I don't know if Walker is still uh, around, mm-hmm. but I can I can put a link in nice. the resources. <laughs> we should create one called Sprinter. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, why did you use screenshot of files and go on Zoom to ask about some problem? If you like, link to abstract and can open the file in seconds in Sketch. Mm. Um, well, for for screenshots in our Figma, we, we, I, I hmm. well, I mean, you abstract. You have to have an open branch, and a lot of times, um, the way that this works around like multiple designers on the same open branch in the same file, I feel like doesn't work really well. Like I imagine that if you want a designer to look at something, they would have to have a sub branch out of that same branch and then have them look there. Like just having the designers at the same time on the same file on the same branch. I don't, if I remember right, it doesn't really work that well. No. So it was really that idea of like, how quick can you get to this? And you know, the difference between our previous workflow and our current workflow is like, you know, there's no match just because you have this link, you can find it, you can edit it, and that's it. Um, we, I, I feel like our designers are using a lot more Loom, like I mentioned, just to talk. Okay, they want, they are having this problem. They can record a video, and then people can asynchronously like watch that and then go to the file. So we've been using a lot of that just because we don't want to, you know, create Zoom meetings. You know, everyone. It's like we want to break anyone's flow. So we want to use the, uh, the asynchronous nature of all these tools to our, our advantage as much as possible. So, you know, someone posts something in Slack, it's, you know, they don't have, maybe they shouldn't have the expectation it's going to get right away. If someone is available, great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Hmm. Okay. No, I think that uh, that answers the question. And was Adobe XD an alternative slash option at any time? Um, yeah, we, uh, we didn't look into Adobe XD that much. We were looking into, like I said, we were, uh, listening to a lot of like, um, what other designers were coming to us and like using Figma and we were very like attuned to what the design community was talking. And there's, I haven't really considered, we didn't even consider Adobe XD, but I feel like at the time they were in a similar position as that Figma 1.0, 2.0, uh, example, just the, their feature set just wasn't there for us. Uh, but I think they have, you know, I have to check them out again, just because I know that they have done quite a lot in the last few years. So, yeah. I, I also saw that yesterday they were talking about design tokens and they were the only tool that had design tokens. So I was like, mm. oh, I hope Figma is listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We all do, really. <laughs> nice. Cool. And um, yeah, we have just uh, two more questions, uh, also two more minutes left. So let's see. Um, did the teams have a problem with merging different files by different designers manually into one artboard versus the automatic merge in abstract? Um, 
right now we don't have well that's the, the issue of, like i said about like revisiting the system with bigger teams right now like our design team is spread out a bit so we have you know a couple of designers working on one area and a couple of other designers working on this other area so there's not a lot of that overlap one to one like you know these two teams are working on the same page at the same time but um with our idea with the I mean, it, the idea is that whenever something is implemented by engineering, that's when the design team would go through the, the designer would go through the process of putting that into our source of truth because it should reflect what's live. And ideally, engineering is also not like merging these like multiple features at the same time. So it would be, we would just try to match whatever, like the cadence of engineering implementing it, which usually it's a little bit more because they want to like do you know, they want to capture all the bugs and things like that. They just tend not to do things at the same time. So if there were two features that were finished around the same time, most likely they wouldn't be implemented at the same time. But if they were, then I would assume that there would have to be some collaboration between the designers, the designers working in that area to kind of put their stuff together. Cool. So yeah, uh, let's uh, just try to cover the last one very quickly. Do you make advanced prototypes for example, forms uh, in ProtoPy as an addition to Figma prototypes? If so, how do you deal with different documentation for some of the prototypes? Um, we haven't really explored other prototyping tools. Uh, we we have used Maze for more prototype, uh, like doing A-B testing with users. So it worked really well. I can just embed the Figma prototype but we haven't really explored like other tools. Um, Figma has also added quite a bit of, you know, prototype in terms in terms of like allowing you to tweak the uh, the curve, right? There's a lot of features that Sketch didn't have. So for us, it's like, is all this brand new like possibilities. <laughs> um, so yeah, we haven't really looked into more like dedicated prototyping tools at this time. All right. Well, um, I can imagine that you are available on Slack for anybody who wants to reach out to ask you more questions. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, it was an awesome presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. High five. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you.